You know that feeling when you get your package, but when you open it, you find another box inside, and then you open that box only to find two more boxes, so you keep going deeper to find even more things to open, and you know what you ordered is down there somewhere, but you don't know how far down, so you have to keep going and going? I hope not, because that would be weird. But that's an experience I have all the time working with 4D Golf, since I need to keep making the tools at the same time as making the game. I'm building the track while the train is still running. So I want to show you a real example of what it's like working in four dimensions, and the unreasonable nuances of making even a simple model. Let's try a pine tree. Surely we could just start with some existing 3D tree somehow. Well, not really. For the same reason you can't just use a 2D picture of a tree in a 3D game. Well, I guess you could with billboards, or if they're really far away, but they look weird and unnatural. And my goal for this game is to avoid camera tricks and make things four-dimensional whenever possible. Okay, I'll build this from scratch. To quote Carl Sagan, if you wish to make a pine tree from scratch, you must first invent the universe. I'll start with a trunk made from a hypercone frustum, and the leaves can be made of frustums too. These are just 40 analogs to regular conical frustums, but instead of polygons, these are polyhedra. And to keep the poly counts low, I'm using an icosphere for the trunk, and octahedra for the leaves. But this tree is too geometric looking, not natural. No problem, I'll throw in some random noise to the leaf vertices to make them seem more organic. Better, but there's a big problem here. Suddenly the meshes have gaps in them, and the reason is incredibly annoying. So, in an extrusion from 2D to 3D, the edges extrude to rectangles, which become triangle pairs. And it doesn't matter which way you choose to triangulate it, because their boundaries are identical. But this isn't the case extruding from 3D to 4D. Here, the triangles extrude to triangular prisms, which each become three tetrahedra. This time there's six unique ways to tetrahedralize them, and if the boundaries don't match, then you get gaps if you move the vertices, so we'll need to fix that. If you don't get it, hold on tight, because the next part is even more convoluted. Each boundary can be in one of two diagonal states, with the split going up or down, but not all pointing up or all pointing down. This is actually equivalent to finding a two-coloring of the edge graph so that no pure red or pure blue triangles are formed also known as the monochromatic triangle problem, which according to Wikipedia is an NP-complete problem in general, though there's probably a better algorithm for planar graphs or something, but I'm not a graph theory expert so I ended up making my own linear time heuristic version, which seems to work on all the meshes I tried it on, but I don't know how robust it is, and that's all to say, these kinds of unexpected problems have shown up literally everywhere. Anyway, it works now, no seams but they definitely don't look like leaves, so I still wasn't happy with it. To make it more leafy, I can use the fragment shader's discard to remove pixels further than a certain radius from the berry center of the triangle, plus some noise. Except it's the 3D berry center of the tetrahedron and a 3D texture for the noise pattern, which of course I had to generate manually. The problem is that discarding fragments will always make the leaves smaller than the original triangle, so I had to add one more mesh tool, which I call fluff, to enlarge all the triangles. And now that's actually looking pretty good. The last step is to add some texture, but again, this is way harder than it needs to be. All textures need to be at least three-dimensional, since any flat texture you see in four dimensions is actually 3D. But there's a ton of problems using 3D textures. First, there basically aren't any online. It's extremely hard to find any. Second, the resolutions are tiny. The max I can go up to is 128 by 128 by 128, which is actually the same size as an HD flat texture. Third, tools are very limited for generating 3D textures, so I end up making most of them procedurally anyway. And finally, I don't have any software to UVW unwrap a tetrahedralized mesh to map it to the surface of 4D stuff. I'm not even good at doing this with 2D textures. So to avoid all of that, what I usually end up doing is using 4D textures, which I can just map to the local or world coordinates to avoid any of the UVW stuff. But if you thought those issues with 3D textures were tough, GPUs don't even support sampling 4D textures, so I couldn't use them at all directly. Instead, my textures are procedural, meaning I take the 4D coordinates and use it to sample one or more 3D textures or formulas to generate the look I'm going for. 
This technique is common for pure shader programs like on Shader Toy. Procedural textures are just a lot easier to adapt to 4D than image textures are. So here's what I came up with for the tree bark. I'm pretty happy with it, and it looks good from any angle or slice. For the leaves, I ended up using the same texture as the grass, which was an interesting process on its own. So might as well go on that tangent while you're still here. I wanted to make a repeating 3D texture that looks like grass from any slice. Originally, I thought maybe I could take a rice grain shape colored lighter at the tips and darker at the center and randomly place them in the volume. But most cross sections ended up looking like circles, so I ditched that idea. Then I thought about doing the same thing, but with a peppermint shape that's dark in the middle and bright on the edges. That worked much better, and it really looks like grass in 4D. So with that all done, the tree is looking great. It's just a little stiff, so I can add some motion in the vertex shader to give the appearance of wind. And that's it. That was the process of modeling one tree. But why does it need to be low poly? That's because for every triangle you can see, there's probably at least 10 times as many that you can't see, since you're only looking along one slice at a time. Plus, there's also all the edges or triangles from the ghost projections that show up alongside the slice. Plus, the shader is doing a lot more work per vertex. So I have to be extra careful with the poly count to keep 4D Golf working smoothly on typical laptops and PCs. And speaking of that, you should wishlist 4D Golf on Steam right now because it'll really help the launch, and I'm getting closer to the release date trailer. I mostly just need to do one more pass through all the themes to improve the models. I hope I didn't break your brains too much with this one, and I'll see you in the next video.